One of Jesus' most loyal followers was the Apostle Paul. He had not always been a believer in Jesus. When he was younger, Paul did not believe that Jesus was God's messenger on earth. But one day, as he was on the road to Damascus, God himself spoke to Paul and showed him that Jesus was in fact the Son of God. Since that day, Paul had become one of the most important followers of Jesus and dedicated his life to spreading Jesus' message about loving and accepting God. He preached this message everywhere he went, and was so passionate that he caused many others to also dedicate themselves to the message of Jesus. I myself was once lost, but then I came to understand the word of Jesus and was saved. Jesus was crucified, and yet he returned to life to offer us a chance to go to heaven. God is able to perform incredible miracles for us when we believe in Him with all of our hearts. Paul was starting to make Jesus very popular across the land, and the local religious leaders started to take notice. They didn't like that people were listening to Paul and starting to care more about the word of Jesus than what they had to say. So together, they hatched a plan to have Paul imprisoned. Arrest him! And so, the guards arrested Paul and took him to be put on trial. Paul, we have brought you here today to put you on trial for spreading lies and trying to create riots in our city. All evidence we have proves that you are guilty, and we will be sending you to prison. I have done no wrong. Paul knew that these were false claims and wished that there was someone who could provide justice. Luckily, during Paul's trial, the king was visiting. The king himself reviewed Paul's case and could see no evidence that Paul had done anything wrong. Paul simply told the king about Jesus and his message and the king found great sympathy for Paul. Paul, I see nothing wrong in what you have done. And in fact, I am moved by what you have told me about Jesus and his message. But even though the king himself had found Paul innocent, this wasn't enough for the religious leaders. They wanted Paul as far away from their land as possible, so they hatched another plan. Aha! But Paul here is in fact a citizen of Rome, so we cannot fairly put him on trial here. We must send him all the way back to Rome to be judged by the emperor for his crimes. It was true, Paul was a citizen of Rome. And so even though the king thought Paul to be innocent of any crime, it was agreed that Paul would be put on a ship and sent all the way to Rome for judgment. Once Paul was put aboard the ship, he and his fellow prisoners had a long and difficult journey to Rome ahead of them. There was not a lot of food on board for the prisoners, and with such a long journey ahead of them, they soon began to feel weak and tired. The ship sailed through the Mediterranean Sea, stopping at different ports to drop off cargo and pick up more prisoners to be taken to Rome. As they sailed, the conditions grew worse and worse. Winter was approaching, and day by day, the skies grew darker and the waves grew higher and more dangerous. Eventually, after many weeks at sea, the ship pulled into a harbor on the Greek island of Crete. But soon after they docked, the crew decided to continue sailing to another port in Crete, where they wanted to spend the winter months. But Paul pleaded with the crew not to leave and to stay in fair havens and wait for the treacherous winter weather to pass. Please. I beg of you, if we continue now, we will find ourselves facing great danger in the winter waters. 
we should stay and spend the winter here, and then continue our journey to Rome. But the ship's crew did not listen to Paul's warning. Instead, they chose to listen to the ship's captain and continue the journey out to sea. When the ship left Fair Havens, the weather was quite calm, but once they reached the open sea, it suddenly turned to a great storm. Harsh winds and giant choppy waves rocked the ship and threatened to sink it. The ship's crew tried their best to battle the storm and keep the ship on course, but soon they realized they were no match for the great hurricane. They had no choice but to give up and let the stormy winds sail the ship in whatever direction they were blowing. The ship stayed caught drifting in the storm for several days, and as food began to run out, everyone on board feared that they would not survive this journey. One night, as hope was running out, an angel of God came to Paul and shared with him wisdom that would save everyone on board. The next morning, Paul shared what the angel had told him with the crew and his fellow passengers. I warned you, we should have stayed on Crete and we would have avoided this terrible storm. But do not be afraid. Last night, an angel came to me and told me this. If we all stay on board this ship, we will be saved. And so, the ship's passengers listened to Paul and hoped that he was right. They spent two weeks on the rocky sea, hungry and afraid, waiting to meet their fate. Eventually, they noticed a change in waters. The water seemed more shallow, and there were more rocks. The sailors realized this meant they were close to land. Some of the sailors saw this as their chance to escape and tried to secretly lower the ship's lifeboats. But Paul spotted this and warned the Roman officers. According to God, we must all stay aboard this ship. If these men leave, none of us can be saved. This time, the soldiers and crew listened to Paul and cut the ropes of the lifeboats. They would all stay on board the ship until it was destroyed, just as Paul said. That morning, Paul sensed their fate was about to arrive. He gathered everyone around and encouraged them to eat in order to prepare for the hardship to come. Today is the day. We must all eat and make sure to build up our strength, for we have a difficult struggle ahead of us today. But if we find our strength and trust in God, and we will survive. Paul was right. That day, the ship approached land. The waters were still rough, and the battered ship was quickly damaged by the rocky coast. Suddenly, the ship began to break apart, and the passengers began to panic. Some jumped into the sea and attempted to swim towards land. Others decided to wait until the ship was totally collapsed and drift towards the shore using pieces of broken wood from the ruined ship. Eventually, every single person from the ship either swam to shore or was washed up on the beach. When they each saw this, they understood that Paul had been correct. As I told you, God promised that if we all stayed on the ship, we would all be saved. And he was right. It turned out that the ship had been wrecked on the island of Malta. Everybody from the ship stayed on the island together as the harsh winter months passed. The locals of the island were very kind to the crew and passengers, offering them shelter, food, and company. While on the island, Paul returned the kindness of the islanders by performing healing miracles. He healed the sick and injured of the shipwreck and cured the illnesses of the local people. Thanks to his faith in God and his ability to trust God's word, Paul managed to save the lives of everyone on board the ship. His good faith was met with kindness from the locals on the island of Malta, who took care of the ship's passengers until the harsh winter was over, and they were able to continue their journey to Rome.